getting ready to close out non-conference play with the Huskies here in this episode. As we started season two with an upset over then ranked number 14 Texas Tech, but had a heartbreaking loss to Big Ten Maryland on the road, where Ethan Hampton, who was named starting quarterback, headed into season two through three interceptions for us. Coach Brooks wanted to wait to make this move until he knew who was the solidified starter as he was going to redshirt senior quarterback Kenny Luth to have him back for another year next season. But we had to focus on the current week ahead of us as we were taking on Mississippi State on the road and they had a deadly combo on offense with senior receiver Kobe McCollum and senior receiver Kevin Coleman who we had to take care of today. But it would be Ethan Hampton in our offense who would take the field first in today's matchup. Facing a third and three early, Hampton would drop back to throw and he would find Keyshawn Pipkin for the first down. And we would be backed up to another third and nine and Hampton would go back to the junior receiver for another one, getting us down to the 38 yard line of Mississippi State where then it would be a shovel pass to Kenji Lewis who would take this down inside the 20, pushed out of bounds at the 11. Where on third down, once again, it would be Keyshawn Pipkin, this time in the end zone for a touchdown. And the Huskies would strike first as Chris Parson in the Bulldogs offense would come out and it would be a handoff to Seth Davis. The junior halfback not picking up much there is on third and nine. They would set up the screen to Davis again and the Huskies would get a third down stop. And we now had a chance to go up two possessions if we could score a touchdown on this drive as Ethan Hampton would connect with his true freshman tight end Kevin Shaughnessy. Getting his offense down to the 17 yard line play action now on third and ten. Hampton rolling out to his left and he would barely get this out in time. So we would send out Jake Siebert in the field goal unit but this kick would bounce off the upright and we wouldn't get any points out of that drive as Chris Parson and the Bulldogs back on offense but it would be Jake Gasway picking off Parsons and getting the ball back for the Huskies as that would give us another chance to go up by two possessions here is on second and four Ethan Hampton would connect with Kyle Thomas and following that up on third and ten on play action Hampton would find Kenji Lewis down inside the five yard line and he would go right back to his senior receiver on an RPO for a touchdown that would put us up 14 to nothing over the Bulldogs as they would look to respond and Seth Davis breaking I don't know how many tackles here would have nothing but green grass in front of him and would take this to the house for a Mississippi State touchdown. I mean, just take a look at this. Seth Davis breaks at least one tackle at the line, at least three or four in the secondary, and after that, there is no one who can stop him as he had nothing in front of him and would get Mississippi State on the board. We were hoping to respond as we were slowly and methodically moving the ball down the field on our next possession, but on third and five, Dontre Russell would get pressure off the edge against Ethan Hampton, and that incomplete pass would force us to send out Jake Siebert, who would knock down this field goal no problem. But that left a little bit too much time left on the clock for Mississippi State to get down the field as Jordan Mosley would pick up the first down. And then on third and one, Chris Parson dropping back to throw, wanted to take a shot deep, but it would be Jacob Finley who would come away with an interception for the Huskies. Coach Brooks wanted to be aggressive and try to get some points on the board, but Kamari Rogers would get it right back for the Bulldogs. And that situation looked awfully familiar to what we saw in the game against Maryland as Kevin Coleman then would get the Bulldogs on the board and his number finally gets called as he was one of the receivers we had to slow down this game if we wanted a chance to win this week. With only five seconds left on the clock, Coach Brooks was smart and just decided to run it out and we would only have a three-point lead headed into halftime. Mississippi State would get the ball to start the second half and it would be a handoff to Seth Davis who would break a tackle and he would take this one down to the 50 and the Bulldogs offense would go right back to him as he would take this up right side for a first down. Now facing a third and one, Chris Parson back to throw and it would be his turn to run it as he would take it into the end zone and Mississippi State would take their first lead of the day 21 to 17 over the Huskies as Kevin Shaughnessy picking up the first down. The Huskies were moving the ball looking to strike back as Ethan Hampton would connect with Kyle Thomas who would bring this inside the 20 down to the 15. We're on third and inches from the sixth it would be Kyle Thomas again holding on to this in traffic for a touchdown as NIU would take the lead back 24 to 21 but Mississippi State wanted to know if their score could be taken higher and Creed Whitmore would be the one to do that for the Bulldogs as he would get the lead right back for them but then on the PAT it would be Amarian Knighton the junior cornerback blocking it for NIU and now it was only a three point lead instead of four but Stone Blanton would get the ball right back for Mississippi State as that would be Ethan Hampton's second interception of the day but thankfully Trey Porter would make this big time tackle and we would be able to hold Mississippi State to only a field goal. Nearing the end of the third quarter, this was a big third down we needed to convert and we would do so. Giving us a fresh set of downs here at the start of the fourth quarter.
quarter as Jalen Poe would take this right side and he would break off his biggest gain as our rushing attack has been struggling against Mississippi State today which would bring us up to a fourth and five and coach Brooks decided to go for it but that pass would be knocked incomplete and we'd have a chance to get the Bulldogs offense off the field here as Parsons back to throw and that pass would be completed to McCollum as the senior receiver would keep this drive alive for Mississippi State then on second and ten RPO and Andre Cobb the junior cornerback is gonna pick this one off for the Huskies and take it back and that would now give us a one point lead as Chris Parsons escaping the pressure he would step up and would be short of the first down as our defense would force the punt and now we needed to pick up a first down on fourth and three Kyle Thomas had more than enough for a first down inside the 10 where on third and goal we would go single setback pressure coming Hampton throwing on the run to the right he had Kyle Thomas that was a touchdown and this extra point would put us up by eight and we had a chance to win this game on fourth and nine but Creed Whitmore would pick up the first down keeping his Bulldogs in this game as Parson back to throw he would find Marquez Dorch who would take it to the house for a touchdown and the Bulldogs would need this two-point conversion but Seth Davis would be stuffed so it was now up to Kyle Ferry and the Mississippi State special teams unit but they would not be able to recover the onside kick Ethan Hampton would come out and take a knee for us and we would improve to two and one on the season with this huge win and it would be coach Brooks's first win over an SEC team Ethan Hampton again had two costly interceptions that almost cost us the game but other than that he looked really good today as our last non-conference game against San Diego State was gonna be super important for us because we had four-star recruit Quinn House four-star right tackle Larry Gunderson four-star outside linebacker Kevin Coffey and three-star right tackle Mike Franks all visiting during this week so let's head on down to the field in DeKalb and see if we can get this win and these recruits. San Diego State would start out with the ball today as Kyle Crum's first pass would be completed as that would bring up a second and nine now. Lucky Sudden, the junior halfback for the Aztecs would get the call, the first down and more, bringing it inside the 30 yard line of the Huskies and then it would be Sudden again out of the backfield through the passing game, bringing the Aztecs to a third and four inside the 10 yard line of NIU as Crum back to throw. His pass would be completed inside the five and then it would be Lucky Sudden again on third and goal taking it into the end zone for San Diego State as the Aztecs would get on the board first here in DeKalb and that would bring out Ethan Hampton in the NIU Huskies offense for the first time today as the senior quarterback would connect with Kyle Thomas for a first down and then he would go right back to him for another first down inside the 25 yard line of San Diego State as then it would be a sweep to Kenji Lewis on second and five as he would pick up a first down following that up on second and three Jalen Poe in motion in the backfield and that would be Keyshawn Pipkin for the NIU touchdown. The Huskies would tie it up at seven apiece as the Aztecs would take over, finding their way into NIU territory. Now faced with a second and ten as Crum back to throw, that pass would be completed for another first down. And this was perhaps the most embarrassing play of the first half for us as look how long Crum had in the pocket. Our defensive line just could not get to him. We had them covered pretty well, but then he would step up and that would be completed to Keith Nolan for a first down. Our defense would get its get back though as on third and goal we would get to crumb before he could even pitch the ball and the Aztecs would have to settle for three points on this drive a touchdown on this possession would give us the lead here is that pass would be completed to Kenji Lewis for a first down and more the senior receiver taking it inside Aztec territory as Jalen Poe would pick up a couple setting up now a third and inches as it would be Keyshawn Pipkin in motion on the receiver pitch for a touchdown and that would give your Huskies a 14 to 10 lead as Jacob Finley was going to pick off the pass from Kyle Crum and with no one in front of him he would take this one all the way back to the house for a Huskies pick six and just like that we had gone up 21 to 10 over the Aztecs and would get another stop looking to tack on another touchdown but Ethan Hampton's pass would be incomplete so we would send out Jake Siebert for a 51 yard field goal attempt and his kick would be up and it would be good as we would have a 14 point lead headed into the second half we look to be in a good place if we could continue the great play that we had in the first half against the Aztecs and we'd already made it past midfield as we would give it off to Kyle Thomas on a jet sweep bringing it inside the 30 following that up on a second and five play action Hampton rolling out to his right he would find true freshman Kevin Shaughnessy for a first but we would need to convert on third and goal from the six as this pass would be knocked incomplete so Jake Siebert would come out and he would make it two for two on the day bringing back out now the Aztecs offense who have had a tough time getting things going today but this looks to be a spark for their offense. Lucky Sutton bringing it across midfield for them and then Keith 
Nolan would find himself wide open for the San Diego State touchdown. And the Aztecs are back only down by 10, looking to get a third down stop here against us. And it was looking like that might happen as on second and 10, they would get pressure on Ethan Hampton backed up to a third and 15. So we were going to take a deep shot to try to pick this up as that pass would be completed to Jake Applegate and he would get the first down. Keeping this drive alive as then it would be a shovel pitch to Kenji Lewis inside the 10, where on first and goal from the 7, it would be a wide receiver sweep to Keyshawn Pipkin who would find his way into the end zone. San Diego State was now down by 17 and they needed points quick as Lewis Brown the 4th would slip one tackle along the left sideline down to the 18. And this drive would only take 3 plays for San Diego State to find the end zone. And somehow Coach Brooks didn't send out the onside kick unit and San Diego State could recover but they touched this ball early. All they had to do was kick the ball 10 yards and it was theirs but they failed to do that. So we would get the ball and take a knee after picking up the first down and we would pick up the much needed win here at home. 34 to 24 over the San Diego State Aztecs with Ethan Hampton having his best game of the season yet throwing for zero interceptions for the first time this season. That win would also land us four star free safety Quinn House, four star right outside linebacker Kevin Coffey, and three star right tackle Mike Franks. As even though it was early on in the season we currently had the 38th ranked best recruiting class in the country and hopefully that number would only go up as we still had a couple four stars left on the board that we'd hopefully sign as we got ready to start conference play next episode against Kent State.